Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you about everything that's happening in Missoula. It includes weather, you got your flagship Friday, we have your, um, um, let's say, news, what's going on in Missoula, and we got your events as well. And there's a whole bunch of movies coming out this weekend. It is basically what I call Oscar Rush uh, session, so I'll talk about a bunch of movies that are coming out, and I'll critique them. So let's kick it off with a little bit of weather. Um, kicking things off this morning, it is currently 34 degrees outside. It's a little cool. It's a little chill, um, but you have that 80% chance of snow showers, then shower, then rain showers, uh, down to about 60%. Tonight, you got that 50% chance of rain and snow. Saturday, it's going to be about 20% chance in the morning, but your highs are going to remain to the 40s. Your lows are going to be 29, and it's going to be much get that way for the next two days. But look, Sunday, there's going to be a little break, so you get a chance to see some of those warmer temperatures start coming back, and you might actually get a chance to enjoy more of a fall. Uh, of course, last year, if you were, if you were here in Missoula last year, we did actually enjoy a, a good uh, span of fall weather. Um, this time, this 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 next couple days, it looks kind of iffy, but I, I suspect that it'll get a lot better for for another week or so. It'll get really freezing cold, and then it'll probably get warm again, and then winter will start. That's usually how it works. There's always like a one week or two of really frigid cold weather during the fall. It's like, oh, winter, it's calm, I guess. But then, you know, it, but it's so weird because winter in Montana usually starts um, November, maybe late October, but then of course, you know, uh, the official calendar says that uh, winter starts in December, so um, that's always laughable what I <laughs> when I think about it. But let's talk about some news that are happening. So locally, nothing much has changed as the university attempts to adapt the budget as Seth Bodner visits the uh, campus when interim president Sheila Stearns talked with UM um, faculty to a heated debate um, or heated discussion. It was more so, it was like uh, they had a presentation about some of the things that they were going to cut. Um, from what I read in the article, uh, the UM paid um, consultants to talk to faculty, according to Doug Coffin, um, to faculty member Doug Coffin, about $87,000 to feed us Kool Aid, according to him. A uh, long story short, it seems like the faculty were happy to see Seth Bodner, when, um, who will be uh, basically taking the place of uh, Royce Engstrom as president of the University of Montana. Um, while Sheila Stearns will be going back into her old position. Um, so Ms. Stearns brought him in, into a room um, to observe and speak on the matter of budget falls and what the, uh, some of the things that are happening at the university that he'll be basically inheriting once he becomes the president at the uh, beginning of the spring semester 2018. So Sheila Stearns is going to try to work with the faculty and try to end it on um, this law, this last streak of the uh, 2017 fall season. Um, the time frame has uh, is the only thing that's been changing because it kind of seems like there hasn't been any kind of new solutions going on here. And um, the things that are being cut directly is the library costs about $600,000. And um, there's not a number, but they are cutting some of the um, funding for the journalism program at the University of Montana. So that's kind of what's happening um, here in Missoula. Uh, there was a $10 million grant that went to preschool care at the University of Montana. Um, so they're going to improve the uh, learning facilities for a lot of preschool uh, kids that go uh, through the University of Montana. So that's one thing that's happening there. You can find out more information about that by going to Missoulian.com. So in state news, um, near Billings in Carbon County, the Sheriff's Department is doing their first ever gun auction, which will be, which basically will help get rid of a surplus of guns that have been seized or turned in since the 1990s. Just be aware, some of these guns were taken away via felonies and some were used in suicides. Um, Wednesday auction came amid sharp focus on who or uh, who can or should purchase uh, and own firearms, a debate that intensified after a man shot 50 um, shot and killed 58 people in Las Vegas during um, turning the gun on himself on October 1st. Um, yes, we're going to be keep, we're going to be hearing about this for a while now. Uh, private sales are not subject to background checks and happened um, most visibly at gun shows. Um, that process has been dubbed the gun show loophole. Um, nine states thus far have universal background checks. Uh, Montana not being one of them. Uh, all transactions at this auction were required to go through someone with a federal firearms license. Um, that means all buyers were checked by the federal background check, which is usually used, um, which is a standard for the nine states that have the universal background checks is to go through this federal process and then basically you, you're you're good to go in terms of guns so if you don't uh, yeah so that's kind of what happened uh, it was the first ever gun auction show a uh, gun auction at the 
Carbon County, uh, and it's up near Billings in Montana. So that's what's happening in the state. So let's talk about something that happens in more. This is, uh, I, I don't usually like to talk about pop culture news, but this is a, a huge deal that's happening in the entertainment industry. And the New Yorker and New York Times made a basically 8,000 word article on Harvey Weinstein, which uh, basically follows a history of sexual assault, assaults, rapes, and various other tech. Um, techniques to prevent actresses from coming out about these allegations. Uh, um, so basically, coerce, coerce the actress to be like, oh, if you want to work in this town, you got to play ball, basically. Uh, other people in the entertainment industry have thrown Hollywood off kilter in this open discussion that has shed light on abuse of power in the film industry. Harvey Weinstein, CB CBE, is an uh, American film producer and former film studio executive. He is co he is a co-founded uh, Miramax, which produced several popular independent films throughout the years. Um, what was considered an open secret for many people in the industry uh, through uh, paying off sexual assault ac accusations through money or career advancements. Either you would say no and never work in this town again, or you would say yes and basically be scarred for life. That's kind of how it worked. Um, dozens of Mr. Weinstein's former and current employees, from assistants to top, ex uh, top executives, actresses, actors, people, directors, and all that stuff, said that they knew of inappropriate conduct while they uh, worked for him. Um, only a handful said that they ever confronted him about this. So that's kind of what's happening um, in and around the area of news. Um, I got some new programs for you guys and uh just letting you guys know that uh trump spoke on um iran just the uh basically just a, a half an hour ago you, you if you guys want to check it out it, uh, it was live stream on rt but of course you'll probably be hearing about it all day um through the news um and basically um trump was talking about how the uh, uh the nuclear uh um I guess the, the there was a nuclear Iran deal back in 2015 that he was criticizing in this particular speech. So I guess his um, focus has become on Iran for right now. So you guys can check that out um, pretty much anywhere because everyone's going to be talking about it. So um, without further ado, here are some of the new programs that are going to be on MCAT. When I come back, I'm going to talk about some movies that are going to be coming out. So stay with me. I'll be right back with Pre-Critic. <laughs> showing photographs of every head he's had the pleasure to have known and all the people that come and go stop and say hello early on i didn't have enough faith in this notion to test it elsewhere so i strayed not even a single solitary inch from my source of inspiration i wrote a book about the big blackfoot even now i haven't strayed all that far here are my, are my last three magazine assignments in order. One, an editor asked me to do a story on industrial agriculture in Idaho, which you'd think would have something to do with potatoes. I went straight to the Snake River and I read in great detail there, in its water, a story of abuse and corruption. Two, an editor sent me to Iowa to write something about the last set of presidential primaries for Harper's Magazine. During the very week I arrived there, a nut job, a joke of a candidate, a billionaire showboat with orange hair, began to rise in the polls to the astonishment of the pundits. So I crowded into a high school gymnasium full of fat, federally subsidized corn farmers, victims of government overreach, every one of them. Uh, we brought back the notion of a downtown master plan. We saw the opportunity and um, and we knew that we needed partners and because this is Missoula and because downtown Missoula is a special place we found those partners in spades and those partners stepped up to not only participate but to put money behind the project money behind the plan uh, blood sweat and tears behind the plan and ultimately when the plan was adopted 
they engaged in the hard work of implementing the plan and that as they say is the secret sauce the fact that this plan is a living breathing document that we refer to in my office weekly at least and that's not an exaggeration and I know the implementation team always has that document on its mind and that implementation that vision that commitment to the plan uh, gave a lot of folks confidence in downtown Missoula so then because he had such a really rapid rise to to fame and acceptance it, it seems it, did that make it so much easier for him they didn't have to do a lot of defending be, mm -hmm. because he just so, it yeah. seems like he did really well really fast yeah, so the question is, because he had a rapid rise to fame, did that make it easier for him? For him not to... To, to not have to defend himself? To work so hard to, to explain himself. Yeah, I mean, other people in the room might have a different take on this. My take, not having known him, is that nothing was going to get him to do something that he didn't feel like doing, for starters. And he was not somebody who was about defending himself. Um, I don't actually think he did have a rapid rise to fame, really. I might have made it seem that way. Certainly he had the show at MoMA, and he was getting a lot of attention from Rose Slivka as the editor of Craft Horizons. But Slivka herself, and also other critics like John Coplins, who was an early editor at Art Forum and was out in California at the time, they felt that the art world had a lot of prejudice against his work because it was in clay. And I don't know how much Volkus actually felt that at the time. He might have talked about that a little bit more as time went on. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time to do the pre-critic rush, as I call it. Um, let's kick things off with Marshall. About a young Thurgood Marshall, the first African-American Supreme Court Justice, as he battles through one of his career-defined cases. Um, Chadwick Boseman from tw 42, Jackie Robinson bio, uh, Get On Up as James Bri Brown's bio, and of course Black Panther in the Marvel movies. It should be good movie, and if you don't go to this uh, movie, you'll get labeled, and if you do go to this movie, you also get labeled. Some more, um, you cannot win especially if you're white get used to it the foreigner from action comedies of jackie chan comes a serious role from jackie chan i call serious chan um and if we get anything like the gravitas performance of karate kid then you can get some good acting um pierce brosnan is uh the bad guy in the foreigner a movie about collateral damage taken to extremes in this revenging type movie um expect nothing new in terms of plot except instead of a white guy fighting a bunch of foreigners watch a foreigner fighting a bunch of white people um up next we got happy death day do you like groundhog day well, here we go again. Um, watch Happy Death Day as we catch a uh, annoying girl get killed over and over again by the same guy just to relive the same day. A watch as she finds out who done it, and then find out why done it to save her own life and another life in a live, die, repeat type movie. So there's a lot of uh, limited release movies also coming out as well. So let's go through it, and I'm going to um, get through it. All right, so. Goodbye, Christopher Robin. What? You can't say hello? I guess uh, I know where all the poo comes from Winnie. Professor Marston and the Wonder Woman. It's about the controversial lives of the creator of Wonder Woman. There, I just saved you a ticket to a movie. Um, Breathe, a movie about a couple who deal with stuff um, wrong with a guy who must be in an iron lung because his girlfriend took his breath away. I'm sure he'll use that. If they don't use that line in the movie, I'm going to be mad. Um, we also have 7952, which is a very confusing, but you should know that they should have just called it the making of the shower scene from Psycho, but I think that would have been too long. Uh, wasted, the story of food waste. Um, so th is there anything you need to know about this? Um, Americans waste food. And while people starve it on the other side of the world, I think that's kind of like another thing. It was like, oh, there's people starving in Indonesia. You got to finish your whole entire food. Um, basically, um, there's enough food in the world, but there's not enough uh, ways to transport the food to the world. So that's kind of how, th that's the big problem right there. They should have called it uh, transportation issues in terms of giving food to people who need it. Anyways, someone wasted their time on making a documentary of a problem and not coming up with a solution. Basically, that's what a lot of times they do. Uh, sure, it highlights a problem that we all know that, that there is a problem. But uh, basically, if you want to have a solution, all you got to do is um, come uh, basically better transportation. There, There's a solution. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so that's pretty much it for pre-critic. I have a 
brand new movie from the flagship uh, folks. So without further ado, here is the flagship Friday video week. Uh, Friday. F <laughs> the flagship Friday video of the week featuring the kids from CS Porter. When, when we were talking about the kids, I, I just, I couldn't. It was pretty interesting the entire time. That entire conversation was just, it was great. I loved it. His kids Okay, let's get stupid. to the interview. Um, I'm, I'm, that was a question. Circus freak, you hear me? This is blasphemy! A circus freak has been my only former occupation. With my high intellect, I could be a stock broker. Had any careers before this? No, except for the kind of throwing over chairs. Why would you have a job about throwing over chairs? I didn't like the janitor. So were you a janitor? No. Like I said, it is too long to tell you. Please on with the questions. Okay, um... Hmm. What's one question? How many times have you been chased by police? 47. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I am sorry, friend. I did not mean to do that. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. And 14, 17. And how does that help with the interview? It does. That's 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 the year invited slip that I talked about. Okay, well I'll get to you I'll get to you later and see. No, ask more questions, please. You have a resume. No, except for like my little cheap paper that I write down bad things about me on. That's a pretty negative sounding resume. Can I have it? Um, I don't have it with me. I ripped it up because I was mad at it. In this country, we don't even use schmeckles. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's just hard to, what do you have there? This is my God. How do you expect to work in an office if you're worship a fidget spinner? Don't mess with me. I have the power of fidget and emoji on my side. Uh, how long have you been a nerd? Never. Um, that's adorable. Okay. Do you want to go? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> well, just ran your guys' uh, verbal resumes. The good thing is none of you got the job! Yeah, that was pretty tame for them. Um, let's talk about uh, some things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. I don't have any city council for you guys, so I'm just going to kind of mull over this episode as well. Um, so let's start with this morning. M Missoula Eats, which is an acronym, um, Missoula Food Banks are welcoming the community event for sharing and learning uh, the right tool.
no, sorry, God, I'm just awful about this. Right tools for growing, buying, and preparing healthy food. Um, enjoy co um, communal meals, cooking demonstration, and how-to sessions designed to help everyone improve access to healthy and affordable foods. Have fun, eat, share, and learn so we can ensure access together. Um, so that's the whole, that's what it stands for. It's ensure access together for Missoula Eats, and it's got the Missoula Food Bank, and it starts now. So uh, if you missed out, um, that's um, that's too bad. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Mismo Roots and Missoula Indoor Sports Arena are uh, basically for any parent who wants their kids to basically do some flips, do, to, do some fun gymnastics and um, trampoline type stuff and foam pits. Um, basically happening from um, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's a great way to just to stay indoors, especially while the weather gets colder. Um, it's a great way to just to be in a safe uh, padded room environment. So um, 10.30, uh, starting at the Missoula Public Library, 10.30 a.m. this morning, Missoula Public Library has all the story times to get your kids uh, associated with reading and learning um, new words every day. So uh, they have it pretty much every single day, and it's usually at 10.30, story time, and tiny tales. It's really fun activities for kids, and kids get a little exposure when it comes to books. Um, arts and crafts also start at 12 um, at the um, Missoula Public Library, and you have your choice between watercolors and yarn. Um, so Missoula Senior Center is the place to be just after lunchtime for bridge group and cribbage. So if you like to sit down, play some card games, and do all that sorts of wonderful things, it all it costs is two twenty-five for some reason at the Missoula Senior Center. Um, do you have a kid in homeschool? Well, they have a um, the uh, the homeschool sports fencing class demo is being held at the Missoula Fencing Association. Free one-hour class. Um, for the sport of Olympic fencing for homeschool students ages 9 to 18. If you like it, you can register for the regular fall season of homeschool classes that run from October 2nd to December 15th, and they meet at 1134 Longstaff. Wear clothes, you can move in and clean indoor gym shoes. Um, epic ho uh, alumni ho um, homecoming happy hour. The Gilkey Executive Education Building. Are you an entrepreneur, passionate, innovative, and cr or creative uh, alum interested in connecting and supporting student entrepreneurs? Join th for the Blackstone Launchpad and the Geckley um, Gilkey Education Building from 3 to 6 p.m. today uh, for samples of foods, demos, and of software, and a showcase of products from our Launchpad entrepreneurs. Networking, cash bar, and exciting entrepreneurs and leaders. So that's happening at the Gilkey Executive Education Building from 3 to 4, 6 p.m. Predator feeding at the Missoula Insectarium happening this afternoon at 4 p.m. They will be feeding a cricket to one of the hungry predators at 4 p.m. at every Friday, and they can join them for to explain and demonstrate how they capture and consume their prey. And you can some come see who is hungry today. So one of the, their uh, um, big spiders is Polly, who is one of the world's largest. Um, Tr uh, I guess I want to say tarantula, but I want—I I guess I might as well just say spiders. Um, but uh, apparently these spiders can get as big as a dinner plate, so be aware that they're pretty big. Um, annual Festival of the Dead Group Art Show. Zootown Arts Community Center is spearheading a bunch of art programs to get things and decorations going for the, uh, uh, the Missoula Annual uh, Day of the Dead Parade, which happens um, on November 2nd, and they just basically uh, do a parade in downtown Missoula. So join in celebrating the life and working through uh, death with self-expression. Only through art can we truly blah blah blah. Okay, so the whole idea of this one is um, <laughs> see these artworks at our gallery at the grand opening October 13th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. It'll be pretty much going on th the rest of this month and see and they'll be hosting a free silk screening. And you can bring a t-shirt and they will adorn it with Festival of the Dead designs. If you are unable to attend the show, the artwork will be on display in the main gallery for the month of October during the open hours. 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Then there's Family Friendly Friday, uh, to kicking off all your uh, late night n um, um, needs. At, and it's starting at the Top Hat Lounge from basically 6 to 8 p.m. You are, you're invited to bring your kids down to the Family Friendly Friday where you can drink, have dinner, and let your kids just run around and it'll be all cray cray. And that kind of transitions into some of your nightly events. So let's kick things off tonight as well. There's Larry Hirschberg at the Highlander Tap Room. He's going to be playing folk music. Aaron Buzzes is going to be at the Highlander Tap Room as well, playing some folk music. I guess there, I guess there's two 
things going on there? I don't know. It, it, but, they, but they're both signed up for the same thing. I don't know if there's going to be competing um, music, but who knows? A uh, live music by Color Green Jazz is going to be jazz music at the Tender Spoon Winery. Um, did he get Dead Hipster? I love the 90s because it's going to be at the Badlander. So if you're a kid of the 90s and you like the 90s and music, um, go on down there and enjoy some 90s music and maybe also some not 90s music. Um, the Sunrise Saloon is doing uh, has a country a band called 406. Um, Ida Ranch Hands is going to be at the Union Club. And Hillstop is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge tonight as well. But we have an art clip for you guys. And it's the last time I'm going to play this art clip for you guys, I promise. Because the art installation at the Gallery of the Visual Arts is ending. So here is the Gallery of the Visual Arts Nuclear Saturday. my puppet can. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time to talk about some Saturday events. Kicking off your Saturday, it's the markets. The markets are going to be going on for the next couple weeks. Uh, the last market is on the October 28th. I don't know why I said the. So it's going to be on October 28th is the last um, Saturday market. The people's market are pretty much closed. I don't know because I walked by there the other day when I was going to the farmer's market and the, pe and, and the under the bridge market. I call it the troll market. They should just call it the troll market. It's better if it's called the troll market. I don't know why they call it the river street market. I guess it's next to the river. Anyways, um, people's market are pretty much closed. Um, they're going to be doing these uh, markets until from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. until October 28th. But they're pretty much a lot of the hardcore people are sticking around. But some of the other people are kind of like slowly just disappearing along the way. Um, but Missoula's City Fire Department second annual pancake breakfast is at the Missoula Firehouse number two, and it basically from 8 a.m. to 10:30 a.m. Pancake, sausages, orange juice, and coffee will be served at the fire station two on 247 Mount Avenue. Um, firefighters will be on hand to give kids a tour of the station and the engineer and the engines. Um, it's the way of saying thanks to the taxpayers for, su su for supporting them and all they do. Donations can be made to our nonprofit association, but not but not all at all required additional parking on the city streets and o or around rose park come check them out before you hit the parade and the parade does start at uh 10 a.m just so you guys know but this is something that's happening you can guys can do before the parade so at 8 30 as well dickinson lifelong learning center is doing sterling metal clay want to work with precious metal clay want to uh uh, strength of sterling silver don't wor don't want to have to deal with carbon Re um, recently working um, with sterling silver metal clays has been much easier to with new products than have hit that have hit the market uh, learned the ins and outs of working with this new clay um, yeah and it's uh, apparently it looks like it's much safer than um, what's been used in the past so the whole idea is you use the kind of like the metal clay and then it, then did then it gets cooked and then it, it works out just perfectly so what, like I was saying, uh, Saturday is the homecoming parade. All s sorts of homecoming events are happening. You can go to e e um, u umt.edu slash events to find out all your homecoming needs and events that are happening on there. But pretty much the homecoming parade um, downtown Missoula will be starting at 10 a.m. Pretty much going about noon, noonish, depending upon, because there's always about over a uh, hundred um, different uh, floats that will be in the parade as well. 
and if you can't make it MCAT will be streaming it on our Facebook and also many other re avenues as well but if you want to find it easier and have the best source uh, our Facebook be sure to like us on Facebook all you got to go all you got to go to is MCAT TV and you can find out more about that as well so um, let's move on to the next thing so this is kind of what's happening after the parade on Saturday the Peace Farm pumpkin party so it is that time of the year where you guys can um, get a pumpkin and the peas farm is basically uh, allows you to come together and they carve pumpkins together uh, plus you drink hot si apple cider and make fresh fr made fresh from the local apples it's pretty much your fall dream come true and is presented by you 104.5 pumpkins range from six to nine dollars cider carving and admission is free um, they have all the tools for, for, for the pumpkin carving and they have the kid safe kind as well so it's like the orange plastic ones the gimmicky ones just so you guys know um, so buckets for guts and hoses for washing uh, the sticky st stuff off uh, and of course you're more than encouraged to wear a costume um, keep the mess out of your house and have a fun time with your Missoula neighbors at the Peace Farm pumpkin party um, Grizz football also takes on North Dakota at 1 p.m. the afternoon which basically means that there's nothing else happening around this time except for MCAT Saturday drop-ins. So if you want to go to a football game and you want to drop your kids off at MCAT and have MCAT basically do Saturday uh, drop-ins, which is basically where the kids just come on down to MCAT, you can find out more information by going to MCAT.org. Animation drop-in is basically a uh, kid drop-off activity from 1 to 5 p.m. Kids get to make videos. We got VR. We got... Um, all sorts of fun little toys here around here that can distract your kids, but also we have the means to help kids create and make their own little short animated movies. And, and also, if they want to make some live action stuff, we've done that in the past. Um, you can look up all those videos by logging on to MCAT.org for all that uh, content as well. Um, let's talk about some other events that are happening. So this is happening on Saturday night, and a couple interesting things are happening Saturday night for sure. Goofs from the underground stand up at the Zach. So Zach is hosting a comedy night in their basement at the Zootown Arts Community Center. So some of the best stand-up comedians in are slinging the chuckles at the Zach is just the place. Tim Miller, Zach Trozak, uh, Troxel, Kyle Kalush, uh, Cole Seth, sorry, Charlie McCorn, Sarah Ashwell, and host Nick Dowdy. Um, doors open at 7, show starts sometime after that. $5, all ages, no booze, no uh, bozos. Cool, cool. That's what it says. Um, and if, if not, the UM is doing some more stuff. Um, University of Montana is doing a play based on Shakespeare's How As You Like It. Not, so it's As You Like It. Sorry, I don't know why I said how. <laughs> With the themes of love, forgiveness, and justice, this pastoral comedy is one of the one of Bard's most enduring and romantic tales. Disguised as love at first sight, bad poetry, and even the lioness... Uh, oh, I guess it's loneliness intertwined to form a delightful backdrop for of some of Shakespeare's most famous phrases. More theater for people who like that more kind of risky stuff as well. Um, later on that night um, at the Roxy Theater at 7.30 p.m., the Roxy Theater is hosting a collaboration of talent and performances including dancers, vocalists, art actors, and performance artists all playing homage to their favorite films, television shows, video games, comic books, manga, and Japanese animation. So this uh, burlesque show is called Cheeky Geeky Vaudeville, colon, Enchanted. So this happens Saturday at 7.30 p.m. and it's going to be 18 for people for language and partial nudity. Just so you guys know, that's kind of like what's happening early, but here are some of your late, late night events. Absolutely, the Christmas Moon is not going to be at the, the Badlanders. It's going to be DJ music. Sunrise Saloon is having some country music by Pay Dirt. Money Penny is going to be a jam. F uh, nice toe-tapping music is going to be at the Union Club. Um, Money Penny. Um, karaoke is going to be at the VFW, and Ghost of Paul Revere is going to be a folk bluegrass band. It's going to be at the Top Hat Lounge, and that's pretty much it. What's happening? Um, there's always a couple things that happen on Sundays, but you guys can check that out by logging on to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is your place to be if you are looking for things to do in Missoula. But of course, if you are interested in finding things out at the University of Montana, University of Montana usually doesn't post things on the Missoula Events calendar, but um, they do have a couple sports things that are happening tonight. There's a volleyball game. The Lady Grizz are going to be taking on somebody. And also there's going to be another uh, volleyball game tomorrow night. So if you're interested in going to watch the um, Grizz volleyball games, you're more than welcome to. They're going to be happening tonight and tomorrow night um, at the university's um, Dahlberg Arena. 
I think so. But you know, Adam Center. That that's that's probably a lot easier to remember. So that's kind of what's happening in and around the city of Missoula. If you want more information, be sure to log on to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your resource to find every single video that you see on MCAT, on including my um morning show wake up missoula is on here as well this is my uh, uh this is our license station that uh puts this show on but of course if you want more information about my morning show you can look me up at wake up missoula.wixsite.com slash wake up missoula so nice we made you write it out twice you can contact it you can get in contact with me by logging onto this website um you can also uh find me on youtube facebook and twitter it's all wonderful and great things and today is such a great day. I made a song for you guys, so I'm going to play you a nice little song when, as I end Wake Up Missoula. So for Wake Up Missoula.